Hey everyone, Andre from Chrome FX Films here, and this is part 5 of my 2D game development tutorial series. So, in this video we're going to be covering level design, and this is a sample level that I made. So we're going to be doing something similar to this. I'm going to play this really quick and show you what it's like. I changed a couple of the player's not features, but attributes. So he moves a little bit faster. And this door's still here. We can open it. You have to jump over the lava. And I have this cave that you can go in. And you walk in front of the chains. You have to jump over the spikes. The spikes don't do anything at this point because that's where we're going to be programming later. And you have to walk here to the end and reach the flag. So we're going to make something similar to this, and I'm going to show you how to create some pretty neat effects with the 3D tools, but the 2D games and the camera's perspective. So we're going to go back to our first scene in this folder. Here we go. There it is. And this is what we had in the last video. So I'm going to delete every cube except the one, oh, except the one that has the collider on it. So we can have a fresh start. And if you imported the sprite pack already, which you should have if you uh, were following from my previous tutorials, we're going to import, oh, let's make sure we're in 2D mode. We have to import this grass. And make the scale a 5 to 1 ratio. Position it on the grid. And if we hold Control and X and we drag, it will snap. And up here we have our snap settings. So if you go to Edit and you go down here to Snap Settings and you click it, you will have this option for uh, whenever you're resizing, rotating, or moving objects in the scene the program will snap it so you can have objects perfectly aligned to whatever um, grid size that you want. I have it at a, uh, it moves at 0.25 on um, all axes. So it's easy to work with. So I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, move that out of the way. And I'm going to snap it here. Select both of them, Control D. And I'll select the, all four of them, Control-D again. All right, so we can delete this box. We're going to tag this first grass as ground, so whenever the player lands, he will be able to jump again like we programmed in our last video. Let's add a box collider. And if there are eight, it's eight times seven, so it would be 56. So we should have this as... 5.6 and if we move the center there you go perfectly aligned this is going to be the area that you move through once you have a key to unlock the door and over on the other side that is going to be the area that the key will be located in so you have to jump to find the key I'll move the player there. All right, so we'll work on that area a little bit, but let's finish this section. So we'll drag in the grass center tile. Same technique. Duplicate it. There you go. And it's always good to organize your objects in your scene. So I'm going to create an empty game object. We're going to call this grass. We're going to select all of this and it will fall into this grass folder. Actually, let me delete this so we can have uh, just these grass blocks. So what this does now is I can just duplicate this and I can have this grass block already created. So it, it helps for um, a, uh, an organized workflow. All right, so let's create another layer. Select all of them, duplicate it. So now the camera shouldn't be able to see that low, so we shouldn't have a problem seen be be below the floor. All right, now let's add a gap here. Duplicate. 
rotate this. Hmm. Make it about one box apart. Oh, that's too far. There you go. Let me uh, create just a reference block so I can know how far to move this one. There you go. And we're going to create a little lava pit here. So we're going to drag in the lava top. Scale it the same as the other ones. Position it. I'll drag in the, uh, the middle block too. Oh, that's right, we have to reposition them first. Close these up. There you go. I don't like the way this is set up, so let me just duplicate that. Yeah, there you go. Create another one. Oh. Be negative 5, and this will just be 26, so we can position it ourselves. And there you go. There's your little lava pit. So we'll create another game object. You can select all objects and focus on them again by pressing F. Call it lava pit. So we have this huge grass block, looks a little plain, so let's delete some of this and adjust the collider accordingly. So we'll divide 5.6 by 2, 2.8. Shift it over. Pretty close. So let's add a little hill here where we can jump up. Now the way our player is set up, we cannot have him walk up ramps. Uh, the physics on the player currently does not allow that, um, but we could fix that later. So duplicate this again, delete this, and now we're going to create the cave environment, which the player is going to walk through, or the castle, as this uh, pack likes to call it. Actually, well, we have a bridge. So let's delete. Actually, no, I'll just I'll add the bridge in here. I like the logs. We're going to add some spikes in here and make it a little more challenging than it is now. So that's going to be the front. Let's signify this as the back of the wall so it's changed its color. So it looks like it's behind it. Duplicate that. And let's add this castle top. Oh, nope, that does not look right. to signify the end of the level. And we'll be able to animate this flag too. So let's do that now. Open up the animation. And flag. So this is going to be sprite animator. So let me grab the other sprite and let's drag it on. And the way you can animate with the sprites is just by doing what I just did. You can drag the uh, different sprites over here in the project tab and then uh, drag it onto your keyframe timeline here and let's see how it looks there you go it's a waving flag maybe a little faster i like that let's add some detail there is a torch somewhere here. There it is. Torch lit. We'll resize this. About there is okay. I would animate it, but the other sprite doesn't look right with the animation. 
All right, so let me organize this a bit so it's easier to find what I'm looking for. I'm going to rename grass to grass block. And castle will be castle block. So let's tag our environment so when the player is interacting with it, it's the correct texture. I mean, uh, tag. Add a collider there. There's no collider here. Tag that as ground. Tag this as ground. The bridge needs to be tagged as ground. And let's add some colliders in the castle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is 0.7 times six, which is 42. So 4.2. Position it. See if I can position this a little better. There you go. And we'll tag this as ground. All right, so now the player should be able to interact, except when I play this, you will see what the issue is. All right, open that door. Oh, I don't think I'm moving fast enough to get past it. Oh, yep, I am. Cool. All right, we'll keep going. So once I enter this area, you'll notice something about the layer and uh, the order of which objects are appearing. So as you can see, see the chains haven't even shown up here. And I'm walking in front of everything, but what if I wanted objects to appear in front? Well, that is where the sorting layers come into effect. We did this earlier with the player, but now we're going to do it with the environment. We can create some pretty cool illusions of depth. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to select every chain, not the parent objects. And I'm going to make its layer character, and I'm going to set its layer to 5, which means it will appear in front of the player. And the torches will all, oh, I realize they're spelled torch. I will make this character, but I'll make this negative five or negative 10 actually, so it's appearing in the back. And this, these castle blocks will also be character, but negative 11, so they appear one layer behind the torches. And the floor here, all of these tiles, see if I can, oh, I can't select them, okay. They will need to be layered as five. So they appear, oh, wait, why are these selected? Oh, that's right, they're just different colored blocks. So the blocks that the player interacts with will have to be in front of the player um, in case we wanted to place objects down here like a rock or some details in the scene. There was a little collision issue here which I'm going to fix now. Rotate this. All right. Let's add some detail. Gonna make sure that these grass blocks are layered properly again. So five. But we'll still be um, in front of everything else. So if you play it, yeah, there you go. That looks cool. Let's make this wall here in front just for fun. Move it. Okay, now, this is the part where we could have some fun with the background. I could just add, oh wait, let me organize these bushes. I'll speak as I'm organizing. 
So we could just add a static background. So we could add some details in the back, but nothing would be moving. Or we can have some fun with the camera's perspective and change it accordingly and have it move dynamically, which is called uh, the parallax effect. And if you don't know what the parallax effect, it, effect is, uh, it's an effect that's been used in games for many years, ever since 2D has really existed. And what it is is uh, there are objects in the front of the scene that are moving faster in the foreground than they are in the background. So it creates an illusion of depth even when a game is not 3D. Now even though our game is 2D, we can change it to a 3D camera by going over here in the settings of your camera. Change the projection from orthographic to perspective. Now nothing happened in the actual scene, but let's change the field of view from 60 to 70. And now if we undo this 2D button up here, select this, it changes to 3D view. Now we're looking at our scene in a 3D space. So what we can do is we can add some background objects here. Do this here. So we have this hill that if I change this back to orthographic, if you watch what happens when we're moving around, it's kind of a creepy smiley face, but it moves with us and not uh, any other way. It's not dynamic at all. But if we change to perspective, as you can see, it's not moving at the same speed and it creates this illusion that it's actually farther away. Although it's a no illusion, it's actually farther away. So the further back we make it, the slower it'll move and the more we can resize this and play around with the depth. So let me create one all the way in the back here. That's really far away. And I'll shrink this one. And let me add some in the front too, in the foreground, and give another illusion of depth. So as you can see, the sorting layer is not correct. So we're going to create uh, changes to foreground, and now it's going to appear in front of everything. We'll just leave it at zero, which is okay. Create this one maybe a little closer. Maybe not so much in the way. And these all have to be set to background. Now this is where these objects need to have the correct layer character. And these are five, so we'll make these five. And you have to do it everywhere. Although sometimes you can use that to create some pretty cool effects in your games. So sometimes you purposely set the wrong layer. But then again, it wouldn't be wrong. All right, so this will be it, and everything should be layered correctly. All right. Oh, the flag. So now if we play it, let's see how the depth looks. That looks kind of cool. Oh, the lava. <laughs> this little guy's floating. All right, so that gives us a better idea of how this looks. I like the way this looks. So now let's see if we play it again. Everything should work fine. All right, cool. Now the sky looks a little bland, so let's change it. So we could do this several ways. We could just make this a uh, just a color, and and that's interesting enough. Although we could do this differently. We could have a gradient effect at the back, so it's a subconscious sort of look. You don't really notice it, but it does look nicer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make our own. So again, I'm using Photoshop here. And let's create a 1920 by 1080 p is fine. It's standard. It's not really what our game resolution is, but it's okay for the use. So we'll create this as the standard sky color. And let's create a slightly whiter look for the bottom. And you can see this this really faint gradient effect. So let's save it. And let's import it in. Create a new folder. Textures. 
and we can drag it in here and it actually looks kind of cool so we have to set this in the back so it does not move we'll have to make this very large all the way in the back so it appears behind everything but we can still use it and it won't move with our player All right, let's play it. That's nice. It's a little bright, so let's turn down the color just a little bit. Okay, and there you go, you got a sky. So let's add some clouds to our sky. Here's the clouds, make it in the background. This is gonna have to be a negative 100 layer. So there's no way anything can appear behind it. This is our first cloud, which should be appearing behind the, uh, the hills. Let's duplicate it, create another one. Let's add our third cloud in. Group these all together. And the hills. Now let's animate the clouds so they move. Although we don't want them to uh, ever run out of clouds, so we'll just create this layer and we'll have the clouds move. So starting over here, we can have the clouds move like this for a, a long time. And eventually once they clear out, we can just have it reset and start again. So let's animate it. All right position and over the course of say two minutes they move from there to there see how fast they're moving okay, it's pretty fast That's better. Let's make sure their animation loops, and it is. Let's play it. So they look nice, but they're obviously too close. Let's make them bigger. Oh, I think we messed up our animation. Oh, that's right. Well, let's make them 100. Okay. How's this look? Maybe they're a little low. Let's just resize the clouds manually. Oh, let's not have them. There you go. They all have to resize. You can change uh, whether or not you want them to all resize together, or with um, or individually by uh, up here pressing the pivot and center button. There you go. Got some clouds. So this is not a bad looking scene. 
Let's go uh, see the... Uh, oh, okay, got to cover up that, that area down there. So let's see how this bridge works. All right, and let's go uh, to the flag at the end. Okay, we can jump through the ceiling, so we'll have to change that. And there's our waving flag at the end. We will add a key environment really quick. Let's have some uh, an area where the player can, can jump. the way this looks. And we'll have the key at this platform. Let's add the collider really quick. I like that. And let's add the key object. We'll make this a blue key. Let's animate it. We'll make it resize. There you go. I like the way that looks, so let's see if we can get it. Oh, okay. Yep, it's... It still have to be tagged as ground. And there you go. All right, I like this way this looks. So we'll make it so you can get the key in our objectives video. And that will be a good place to end this video. So I like what we've come up with so far. I'm looking forward to getting to program this and making things actually happen in the scene and some challenges. So now we can open doors. There's an environment. We're going to make it so you can pick up the key, get hurt by lava. We're still going to have to be able to pick up coins. Uh, there's a checkpoint system, sounds and music. There's still so much to do, but I'm really looking forward to doing it. And I hope you guys will stick around to see it. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.